Are you ever left with awkward spaces in your park that you don't know what to do with? In this video, I'm going to show you 10 ways to fill these spaces that are going to make your parks in Jurassic World Evolution 2 even more beautiful, more interesting, and more realistic. The first tip is an idea of fellow YouTube park builder Legion, who popped into one of my streams to suggest a way to make food trucks. I think this is a super cute and realistic way to fill some small empty spaces in your park. I've built two versions for you, the first one using the truck decoration as suggested, and for the second, I wanted to try out something else, which is to use the MVU trucks, which I probably like a little bit more, even though it is more of a hassle. Comment down below which one you prefer. By the way, if you don't know how to use these vehicles as decoration, just place the building off to the side somewhere, drive out the vehicle, block their return to the building, and then park the vehicle wherever you like. They will stay there forever. For both, the base build is similar. Just place your pretend food truck and add some flags, tables and chairs, picnic tables, parasols, whatever you like to create a small seating area for your guests. Legion has since done a tip video, including the food truck idea and other tricks. I will link that in the description box for you to check out. For my real Jurassic Park build, I made more habitats than we have Jurassic species in the game. So I turned one into a construction site, but it's also a perfect filler for those small awkward spaces that you might have left. Maybe there's a habitat under construction, like in this example, or maybe there's a guest section under construction. You can put your own spin on any of these ideas, depending on the space that you have to fill. Some little tricks that I found really helpful with the illusion is leaving the fencing incomplete and placing a panel right in front of the truck, like it's about to be lifted into position to complete the perimeter of the habitat. The concrete barriers are lined up to pretend that it's building material used to construct the concrete fence. There are logs off to the side from trees that have been cleared to make room for construction. There's a little rest area in the corner where the construction workers can go on break. There's a pit and matching mound of dirt because they've been digging down to place one of the carnivore feeders. And finally, it did, it did take a lot of time, but this kind of paneling using the banners to stop curious guests from gawking at the construction workers is exactly the kind of stuff I'd see in real life, providing privacy and advertising for what is being built. That is one big pile of shit. In a realistic park, dinosaurs would produce a lot of fertilizer. This staff section was inspired by the upcoming update for Prehistoric Kingdom. This filler is perfect in between the habitats of some of your larger dinosaurs. The droppings, droppings. would be collected for composting and then later used to fertilize the paleobotany plants that are feeding the dinosaurs. To accompany this compost area, you could build a little paleobotany farm as well, just by placing several neat rows of planters and trees, which is something I used to do way back in Jurassic World Evolution 1. Speaking of way back, this video is five months in the making. Shout out to Rudy Renkamel for reminding me with his Planet Zoo video that I had saved this Reddit post five months ago to make this video. I'm too late to help this Redditor, but I hope this video helps out someone else out there. If it does, I hope I've earned a like and maybe even for you to hit that subscribe. I have a lot of tips and tricks videos for Jurassic World Evolution 2 on the channel and I cover all of the latest news. The fourth park filler makes wonderful use of all of the best decorations that we have in the game, which is an outdoor museum first seen on our mini Nublar park build. As with every single one of these park filler ideas, you can make it as small or as large as you want and any shape, whatever is going to work best in those blank spaces that you have left. It's really important that you keep that in mind while watching this entire video. I don't know what kind of size and shape you have to work with, but you do and you can make these ideas work anywhere. What I think really helps sell the museum quality of it is spending some time on the pathwork that makes up the flooring. I associate natural history museums with kind of ornate classic flooring, like probably my favorite place on earth, second only to home, the London Natural History Museum. Then the most important decorations to use are going to be the skeletons and the amber pieces, but you can get creative with what you want to put in your museum. In a park surrounded by gigantic dinosaurs, things can get pretty dangerous. 
So to add to park safety and a sense of realism, you can add a security outpost. A remote outpost where you can have a couple of ranger jeeps on standby in case of emergency and a security tower from where your staff can look out over an entire area and spot danger and sound the alarm. I also added a bunker to this area, but it's more like an office where park guests can go to get help in emergency situations or maybe they got pickpocketed and need to report the crime. I put in the helipad sign and I am willfully ignoring that it says helipad and I'm just focusing on the H which I decree stands for help. If any guest needs help, this is where they should come. Sticking with the fact of the matter that a dinosaur park is a disaster waiting to happen, it's also realistic to add shelters to your park even if you are playing in sandbox mode and have escapes turned off. I personally always play with ideal settings but I do still like coming up with stories for the park that add realism. I think you would want to have shelters in your park, but I also think you would want them out of sight, so as not to confront your park guests with any thoughts of an imminent violent death. So I'm using some space for two shelters made invisible from the guest path using the wall pieces. If your awkward little leftover space allows it, optimize the accessibility of these shelters by having access paths on both sides. One of my favorite things to build is a campsite. I think it's super cute and the white tents are perfect for it. You could pretend that this little area is for your most adventurous guests who want to go camping for their overnight stay in the park. As always, I include a ring of stones for the fire pit surrounded by benches and I have the tents face the pit for warmth. Off to the side, there are the decorative restrooms and a corner where people need to recycle their waste. I've made this area very small, but I've made a bigger and more elaborate campsite for my mini Manscor Island just to give you an idea of how versatile this idea and any of these ideas are for filling your park. If your awkward leftover space is by some water, maybe because you created a custom island on a square map like I like doing, turn it into a little beach resort area. This of course only makes sense if you are building your dinosaur park in one of the warmer biomes, and I think the tropical biome is best suited for it. If you have several little awkward spaces left in your parks and you don't know what to do with them, add a hyperloop station to each and connect them as a subway system under your park to improve park transport. I like using the power plant for this purpose because the low profile of the building can easily be hidden behind decorations to make it look more guest appropriate. Conversely, you can also just place one station and have the Hyperloop not go anywhere, pretending that it is an underground roller coaster. This is one of my fake attractions that I like to use to add more variety to my parks. I've done a video with 12 new fake attractions that you can check out. And finally, number 10, any space can be turned into a lovely plaza for your guests. I have a video with 10 plaza examples and tips on how to make beautiful plazas. So I'm gonna direct you there so we keep this video short. If you've enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to enjoy these two. So check them out for more ideas to make even better parks. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.